everyone welcome back today's topic is matrix operations but before we begin let's have a quick recap in the previous video you saw what matrices are matrices are nothing but ordered arrangement of elements let us take an example what if we are given a system of equations 2x plus 3y is equal to 9 and x minus y is equal to 3 and i pick up the coefficients and the right hand side and put them in square brackets. So we'll start with the first equation, the coefficient of x is 2, then come to the coefficient of y, which is 3. Separate the right hand side, take the right hand side, it is 9. Come to the second equation, coefficient of x is 1, coefficient of y is minus 1, and the right hand side is 3. So what have we done? We have just picked the coefficients from the two equations and put them in square brackets. What you get is a matrix. Here we have maintained the order. We have written the coefficients as they were given in the equations. Now matrices have their own advantages. You will see when we write our equations in a matrix form, we can solve them we can find the inverse there are many operations which can be done and here the advantages the coefficients which you have inside these square brackets they can be made smaller and smaller many of them can be reduced to zero and that helps us in solving you will see that later on so matrix is nothing but a ordered arrangement of elements now, second thing which we did was order of a matrix. If a matrix has m rows and n columns, then the order is given by m by n. And what are the number of elements in the matrix? How do we get that? We just multiply m by n. So, number of elements will be mn. Third thing what we did was types of matrices. You saw what row, column, diagonal, scalar, identity, zero matrix and what are upper and lower triangle matrices. You can refer to the previous video. Let's do one example. What if you are given that a matrix has six elements? What are the possible order of such a matrix? Now, as we are given, number of elements of the matrix are six. So, number of elements is six and order you know is nothing but m by n so if we factorize 6 we'll get the orders possible orders so what are the factors of 6 factors of 6 are 1 into 6 6 into 1 2 into 3 and 3 into 2. These are the only possible factors. So these are the possible orders. Now, you have done different types of matrices. Let's look at these four possible orders. The first was 1 by 6. Now, this implies we have one row and six columns. Now, what type of a matrix we'll have? We will have a matrix of the type where only one row is there, six columns, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, where these AIs are your elements. I've just taken a general form. And the order here is one by six. We get a row matrix. The second possibility was 6 by 1. Now, this implies there are 6 rows and 1 column. Now, this means there are 6 rows. So, we will have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. This type of matrix you know it's a column matrix. We have six rows and one column. It's a column matrix. To the third case, the third possibility was two by three. 
Now this implies there are two rows and three columns. Now what type of a matrix are you going to get? Where there are two rows and three columns. So the elements, if we take as AIs and BIs, it would be A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. See here, two rows are there and three columns are there. And the last case was 3 by 2. Now, which means there are three rows and two columns. Now, here we have three rows. So, our matrix would be of the form A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. See, here we have three rows. And we have two columns. So these are the possible orders. Now let's see when are two matrices equal. What if we are given two matrices A and B? A has elements Aij and B has elements Bij. Then A will be equal to B if and only if. First thing, they have the same order and second thing their corresponding elements are equal are equal now what does that mean it means a i j are equal to b i j for all i and J. Note, if A is a matrix which has an order M by N, then for A to be equal to another matrix B, B should also have the same order M by N. This is the first condition. And the second condition is that their corresponding elements should be equal. This would be clear when we Look at this example. Let's take two 2 by 2 matrices A and B, where A has the elements A11, A12, A21, A22, 2 by 2 matrix, and B has the elements B11, B12, B21, and B22. The matrix of 2 by 2. Now, A is equal to B if and only if both have the same order, both A and B have same order, which we already have as both of them are 2 by 2. And the second thing is that my A11 is equal to B11. So element corresponding to A11 is B11. A12 is equal to B12. That's its corresponding element. A21 is equal to its corresponding element B21 and A22. Is equal to B two two. So when both the conditions are satisfied, we say that the matrices are equal. Let's now come to addition of matrices. First of all, we can add any number of matrices provided they have the same order. Here, for example, I have taken two matrices A and B of the order two by three. A has elements AIs, B has elements BIs. Now, if we are asked to find the sum of A and B, how do we do that? We find the sum by adding the corresponding elements. I keep using this word corresponding elements. What do we mean by that? Imagine I pick up A and place it over B in such a way that A11 falls over B11. 
So then B11 is the corresponding element to A11. And the corresponding element of A12 will be B12. Corresponding element of A13 will be B13. And in the same way, in the second row, A21 falls on B21, A22 falls on B22, A23 falls on B23. So, A21 has a corresponding element B21, A22 has a corresponding element B22, and A23 has the corresponding element B23. So, what will be the sum? The sum of A plus B will be, I am adding the corresponding elements A11 plus B11, A12 plus B12, A13 plus B13. Come to the second row, A21 plus B21, A22 added to its corresponding element B22 and A23 plus B23. You will see the resultant matrix will also be of the same order 2 by 3. So we have added the corresponding elements. Let's look at one example. What if we are given two matrices A and B? Let's take them to be of order 2, which have elements 2, 3, let's say 1, minus 1. This is of order 2 by 2. And B has elements 1, minus 3, 0, 9. This is also 2 by 2. Then what will be our A plus B? We will add the corresponding element. So 2 will be added to 1. 3 will be added to minus 3. 1 will be added to 0. Minus 1 will be added to 9. And on simplifying, we will again get a 2 by 2 matrix. We'll get 3, 0, 1 and 8 as a resultant matrix. See, this is also of order 2 by 2. Now, what happens when we subtract two matrices? I have taken the same matrices A and B. Here, we subtract the corresponding elements. So, the difference A minus B will be nothing but A11 minus B11, A12 minus B12, A13 minus B13, A21 minus B21, A22 minus B22 and A23 minus B23. What if we are given A is equal to 2, 1, 5, 6 and B is 3 minus 1, 2, 0. Then, what will be our A minus B? A minus B means I am subtracting the elements of B from A. So, 2 minus 3, the corresponding elements are subtracted. 1 minus of minus 1, 5 minus 2, 6 minus 0. The resultant matrix you see is also a 2 by 2 matrix. So what do we get on simplifying? We'll get minus 1. This gives us 2, 3 and 6 as a final matrix A minus B. Now, what if we are asked to find B minus A? B minus A means I'm now subtracting elements of A from B. So B has values 3, minus 1, 2, 0. So 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 5, 0, minus 6. This is also 2 by 2. Simplify, you will get the resultant matrix as 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 6. Now, come to scalar multiplication. What do we understand by that? Let us take k to be some scalar. By scalar, we mean a constant number. And let's take some matrix A, which has elements Ais. I've taken a 
2 by 2 matrix here. Now, K A, that is I am multiplying A by a scalar K, means every element of A will be multiplied by K. So, your K A is K A 1 1, K A 1 2, K A 2 1 and K 2 2. Let's take an example. If K is given to be, let's say 3, and our matrix A is 1, 0, minus 3, 2, then what will be 3 times A? This is what we mean by scalar multiplication. Every element of A will be multiplied by 3. So we will get 3 into 1, 3 into 0, 3 into minus 3, and 3 into 2. Your matrix will again be of order 2 by 2. This is 2 by 2 matrix. The resultant matrix is 3, 0, minus 9, 6. Let me now take k to be minus 2 because it's a scalar. k can have any value, positive or negative. Then what will we get? Our minus 2a will be nothing but minus 2 into 1 minus 2 into 0 minus 2 into minus 3 minus 2 into 2. This will be a resultant matrix. Simplify, we will get the minus 2a as minus 2, 0, 6 and minus 4 as a final matrix. Matrices of same order follow the following group properties with respect to addition. If we take three matrices ABC of order M by N, then the following rules will hold. The first is commutative law. A plus B is equal to B plus A, which means that in whatever order I add A and B, the resultant matrix will be the same. Second law is associative law, which states if I take three matrices ABC, then if I add A plus B and to that I add C or to A I add the sum of B plus C, we will get the same resultant matrix. In a nutshell, commutative law and associative law state that the order of addition of matrices does not matter. Come to the third law, additive identity. Now, every matrix A has an additive identity O of the same order M by N, which means that when O is added to A, I get the matrix back or A plus O is equal to O plus A is equal to A. Come to the fourth point, additive inverse. Every matrix A has an additive inverse minus A of the same order M by N. Now, what does that mean? It means that when I add the additive inverse to my matrix A, I get back the additive identity O. Here also, whether it is A plus minus A or minus A plus A, I'll get the additive identity. Thank you for watching. Our next video will be on matrix multiplication. For detailed notes and exercises for practice, you can watch my website profprithivajpay.com.